I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, before we start, as always, let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us of the wonderful Sabbath day so far. We pray now that as we embark on learning a little bit more about our health and the function of our system, Father, so that we can prepare ourselves to be healthier, we pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us in our speech, take over, that we hear what we need to hear, and that we will remain faithful in our health practices to you, for we ask it in Christ's name, amen. How many of you have heard of oxidative stress? Two, three. Well, it's relatively, uh, it's been around as far as the terminology uh, since probably close to 2003, 2004. They've talked about it before that, but the science of this is really kind of interesting. And I'll kind of give you a, a real quick thumbnail sketch of what we're going to be talking about. What causes oxidative stress? What does oxi oxidative stress do to our system? What can we do to combat it? And I'll share this with you right now off the get-go. The studies that have gone on primarily in some major teaching institutions, there's been over 120,000 different studies on this topic. And uh, we are going to go a little deep in some science today. And bear with me, and then we'll come out of it and we'll explain why we are doing it this way, because we need to explain what this thing is all about and how we can combat it. Because what we're noticing now <clears throat> in the studies is as far as the aging process, that it is slowing it down and in laboratory test animals and now they're, they're claiming the same thing for humans. But we'll see, we'll go through this thing together. Um, oxidative stress is essentially an imbalance between the production of free radicals and the ability of the body to counteract or detoxify their harmful effects through neutralization by antioxidants. Now, we've talked about free radicals uh, before, and I'm going to go into that a little bit, and what an antioxidant is, and there are two primary types of antioxidants we're going to talk about today. The type we eat, and the kinds that God has provided for us in our systems themselves. Um, Oxidative stress, then, is something like this. Free radicals, the antioxidants are not enough to take care of all the free radicals that we have in our system, and therefore, the oxidative stress takes over. According to the scientists that we have talked to and a number of scientists that are coming out in the publications on PubMed, they're saying that oxidative stress may be the major cause for most chronic conditions. And that means cancer diabetes, cholesterol issues, arthritic issues. You just go down the list of chronic conditions. So it's important to know this, but it's also important to know, okay, well, is this hopeless? And the answer is no. But just to kind of give you an example of what the studies have shown, the free, act, uh, the free radical and the oxidative stress affects all of these body organs. You know, I'm not gonna go over each of these, but just on the brain alone, it talks about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, the lungs, you got asthma, COPD, and of course, cigarette smoking and all this causes most of that, of the uh, COPD. Chronic kidney disease, go around to the skin. You got the heart, uh, CHD, the uh, cardiac fibrosis. All of these things that you can see here are related to this oxidative stress. So just as a looking at this in general, would you say that it is important to know what causes this stuff. Now the thing that I'm going to lump everything together is the aging process. I mean, if you get my age, and not many of you are my age, I'm getting old. The fact of the matter is we're looking to live, live longer. You know, I want to live longer, but I don't want to live decrepit. <laughs> I don't want to live with a heart problem. I don't like most of my uncles. I don't want to live with high blood pressure. I don't want to live with diabetes and have to worry about this and all the other nasties that come along with the aging process. So is the word is, folks, I'm going to tell you, 
that they are finding some marvelous things now by adjusting this particular oxidative stress in the reversal of some of these conditions. All right? Is that hope? Is that good enough? Now let's learn a little bit more about it. Okay, what causes oxidative stress primarily? Well, we have diet and smoking at the top and alcohol. Well, not a lot of us have to deal with, with the smoking and the alcohol in this audience. What about our diet? Where do you find, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, where do you find, again, as, as a, those that have been to my seminars, where do you find the antioxidants to offset these free radicals in our diet? What kind of foods? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes. Okay? That's where you get your antioxidants. Um, <clears throat> but just kind of go around the list. Uh, the, the problem is that we are now being bombarded by a lot of different things, like, for instance, the pesticides. Do you know that they are releasing over 2,000 brand new chemicals every year into our environment? No studies have been going on to indicate what, what will these cause. I mean, are they linked to cancer? Are they linked to a lot of other things? The answer is probably yes, but nobody knows. You know, when you got, you know, something to the tune of 12,000 new carcinogenic compounds in the last seven years that have been puked into our environment, pardon me for saying this way, and nothing is, they're not doing anything to check this at all, then we have to do something ourselves. Now, a lot of us moving into the country, getting away from the city, for instance. But we are still being bombarded with a lot of free radicals. Uh, the stress is another one. Fast foods, of course, you know this, we've talked about that. Inadequate amounts of uh, physical exercise. And then again, as you mentioned, inadequate amount of what we consider the fruits and the vegetables that you need to offset this. So we're going to talk about free radicals just for a moment. I'm going to show a video on this so you kind of get an idea in your mind more of what a free radical is. Every part of your body's biochemical reactions will release free radicals. This is a normal process. Some free radicals are necessary. But the fact that we are being inundated with these every day of our lives, they are saying now that, and we'll, we'll show this on the slide in just a minute, but that they've estimated that the free radicals that are produced in our systems each day of our lives is something to the tune of 300 sextillion free radicals. I don't know how they figure this out, but that's what the scientists are saying. That's 300, by the way, with 21 zeros. All right? Okay, a free radical is an oxygen-containing molecule that has one or more unpaired electrons. That means that it is significantly reactive to the system because it's, it's, there is not a balance there, making it highly reactive with other molecules. These highly reactive molecules roam the body in search of other electrons and in the process seek out and destroy healthy cells. The most dangerous effects of free radical damage is the DNA. And that's where your real crux of your chronic condition start when it starts bombarding the DNA. So this kind of gives you an example of that at the bottom. You've got a normal cell, you've got the free radical attack on this, and then what happens with oxidative stress. Doesn't look good on the drawing either, does it? All right. Formation of free radicals. Almost kind of like if you looked at what we said before, it's almost the same thing. Smoking, radiation, UV lights, pollution, and so on. The, according to the National Cancer Institute, free radicals can be hazardous to the body and damage all major components of cells, including DNA, proteins, and cell membranes. The damage to cells caused by the free radicals, especially the damage to DNA, may play a role in the development of cancer. All right. Entering a tissue cell through the cell membrane. There are many elements in our body that comprise molecules. An electron from the outer bonding shell of one element forms a bond with the outer bonding second element, 
forming what is called a chemical bond. During oxidation, an electron can be knocked out of the chemical bond, resulting in a highly reactive free radical where an unshared electron occur. Oxidation factors include poor diet, pollution, drugs, radiation, stress, injury, aging, and infection. Disease risk include cancer, heart disease, arthritis, autoimmune disease, and over 90 other diseases. This free radical can capture electrons from normal healthy molecules and create free radicals that damage the healthy molecules, such as molecules found in DNA. The damaged cell can release free radicals and continue the effects of oxidative stress to surrounding cells. To prevent or reverse these very destructive processes, the body constantly needs a reservoir of antioxidant molecules. Antioxidants are important in defending against free radicals. Antioxidant molecules have extra electrons and can supply electrons to neutralize free radicals. The antioxidants travel through blood vessels to reach the damaged cells. The antioxidant molecule will supply the free radical with an electron to repair and stabilize the chemical bond. In supplying electrons, the antioxidant molecules do not themselves become free radicals. Frequent healthy dosages of a variety of antioxidants will assure this destructive oxidation process will be minimized, reducing the potential for cancer, heart disease, autoimmune disease, and diabetes, not to mention their importance in anti-aging. Now. With that being said, what we end up with then is what we call exogenous antioxidants. These are foods that we eat. Um, the, you will find that these particular antioxidants that we mentioned, there are some here, they're called the, the beta carotene or the other carotenoids. You've got the lycopene, you get in tomatoes, you've got bioflavonoids, you get in citrus. CoQ10, vitamin C, E, and A, selenium. These are good sources of antioxidants, but again, as we know, a plant-based diet has a variety of other types of antioxidants that we have. But here's the problem. We mentioned the 300 sextillion free radicals, and most of these molecules, like vitamin C, even though it doesn't become a free radical once it neutralizes a free radical itself, that's it, it's done its job. You get a one-on-one -on -one thing with this. 
So in, in practicality, of the 300 sextillion free radicals that you find each day, how many oranges would you have to eat? 365, they figured it out. <laughs> so, okay, well, there's blueberries. We know we get a lot of antioxidants in blueberries, right? You would have to eat 15 pounds of blueberries a day. And okay, let's take supplements. Let's take vitamin C, for instance. How many vitamin C capsules would you have to take a day of 500 milligrams each? 172 of them to accommodate this. Well, nobody's going to do this, right? So are we, we're going to, we, it's inevitable then we are going to have to live with oxidative stress because it's the deficit, you know, for what we don't take care of with the antioxidants. The answer is absolutely not. God has a, provided for us a very marvelous mechanism within our system called uh, antioxidant enzymes, all right? And so what we are going to call them is endogenous, meaning they're, they're formed in our bodies itself. Now, this is what we want to study today, is how can we, because just, just as an example, just to show you, these antioxidant enzymes neutralize one million free radicals per second and they live for about two weeks. They are glutathione. Now, there are others. I'm just mentioning these, these three, and actually we're going to only talk about glutathione today. And I want you to remember the word, because if you haven't been watching Dr. Oz, you're not going to know about this, because he's talked about it quite a bit. Glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and uh, catalase. Now, these are formed in the body if we're eating right, if we're doing the right things. And if you think about this, if it's taking care of a million free radicals per second for the two weeks of its life, then you can see that you can actually reduce oxidative stress. But how many of us are actually doing this in our daily routine? So what I want to do is I want to go through this process and we're going to get a little deeper in science on this because there's something else that I want to share with you is now science has gone far into the genetic profile of our systems so now they know what we can do as far as supplements and diet to correct some of these genetic abnormalities. Did you ever think that would come about? I want to tell you what, it all started with, with when I was studying this about 14 years ago that we were looking at pharmaceuticals to do this. And it was, it was sad, the studies that they were doing. It just wasn't working. And this gentleman, you see SOD there, superoxide dismutase, the doctor that, it, that discovered this at Duke University, Dr. Joe McCord, he started on a quest, this was in the 60s, 1968 is when he, he discovered this particular molecule in our bodies. Did not know what it did. It wasn't until, as science will grow, as they begin to study, they understood what this thing was really doing in the system. I'm not going to talk about that one today, but I am going to talk about the glutathione because they consider it the master endogenous, anti endogenous antioxidant that is produced by our cells. Every cell of your body will produce this, all right? So this is going to be a short video on the glutathione, what it does primarily, and it's kind of like a, a, a drawing th type thing, but this particular doctor did this. I thought it was good, so I wanted to share this with you. What are the causes of aging and sickness that glutathione is protecting against? The first cause of aging that glutathione addresses is oxidative stress. Our bodies use oxygen, but the obligate result of using oxygen is that it burns. And every time your body burns oxygen, if you don't counter that burning with an antioxidant, you will suffer the consequences of oxidative stress, including cell damage, cell death, and dysfunction of the cells involved. Think of it this way. In the presence of oxygen, a metal pipe will eventually rust. In your body, that rusting is called oxidative stress. Because science has understood the crushing impact of oxidative stress in the body, the study of antioxidants that neutralize oxidative stress has become popular and widespread. 
Today, research has identified over 70 diseases of aging, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and chronic fatigue syndrome, just to name a few that result from the accumulation of oxidative stress. For all the antioxidants that have ever been marketed and touted for their powerful properties, the scientific community has concluded that glutathione is the body's master antioxidant. It's considered the master antioxidant because uniquely it can neutralize any type of free radical and because it is responsible for recycling other antioxidants that have been spent. In fact, many antioxidants are considered powerful and useful primarily because they help to protect and optimize the function of glutathione. Glutathione has been shown over and over again to be the most important antioxidant in the human body. The next cause of aging that glutathione protects against is the loss of ATP production. Cars run on fuel and the human body runs on an energy molecule called ATP. ATP is the energy source for every cellular function. Research has shown that glutathione is required for the body's production of ATP and that your ATP levels are limited by the amount of glutathione available in your cells. As your glutathione levels decline, so does your energy. And when your cells don't have enough energy to perform their vital functions, the body shuts down, becomes dysfunctional, ages faster, becomes diseased, and eventually dies. For instance, if a neuron does not have enough energy, your memory is impaired. If a muscle cell lacks energy, you tire more quickly and are weaker. If your immune system does not have enough energy, those cells can no longer protect the body from disease and so forth. Not to mention, today there's an energy drink market that has surpassed $10 billion worldwide because people who run out of ATP, their body's natural source of energy, are trying to use stimulants and sugars to prop themselves up to make it through the day. A third driver of aging at the cellular level that glutathione protects against is inflammation. Inflammation is the body's mortal enemy and is an underlying root cause or resulting problem of arguably every disease known to science. Inflammation results in pain, fatigue, the inability for cells to communicate and perform tasks effectively, and the inability for hormones to circulate properly, just to name a few. In a front cover story, Time Magazine in 2004 called inflammation the secret killer based on the overwhelming data that correlates cellular inflammation with the breakdown of so many critical functions in the body. A fourth way that glutathione protects your cells is by exporting toxins out of the body. One of the greatest drivers of sickness in the body is toxicity. Today people are exposed to a greater toxic load in the environment than the body was meant to handle. Over 80,000 toxic industrial chemicals are now commonly used in manufacturing and industry, not to mention electromagnetic radiation that exists virtually everywhere in our technologically advanced society. Toxins are found in the polluted air we breathe, in the pesticides and fertilizers that protect our food supply, in processed foods, in our water supply, in the pharmaceutical drugs that are prescribed for us, and so on. Without sufficient glutathione, your cells cannot export toxins out of the body and diseases of toxicity wreak havoc. For instance, one of the leading suspects behind diseases such as MS and autism is heavy metal toxicity. Finally, glutathione has been called by many the maestro of the immune system because of its role in supporting and energizing it. With adequate glutathione, your body's immune system can fight off many of the health problems once thought an inevitable part of the aging process. Without question, glutathione is essential to protect your health and to defend it from the drivers of disease and aging. And as a capstone to this discussion, a clinical study on centenarians, people who live to 100 years of age or older, found that they demonstrate similar glutathione levels of a 30 to 50 year old normal healthy person.
Glutathione is undisputedly the defender of your cell. And when you understand its role, the decision to support glutathione in your body is as intuitive as the choice to drink clean water or to breathe unpolluted air or to eat pure whole foods when given the choice. So how many of you want to increase your glutathione levels? That's what we're going to talk about. And there's a way to do this. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we've noted in the scientific literature is says that after about age 20, our bodies begin to slow down the production of these vital antioxidants. So by the time you get to be in your 70s and 80s, you're working on about 15 to 20% of this. So is that something that you can help? And the answer is absolutely. Studies have now shown how to solve a lot of these problems, all right? Now, what um, I want to share with you here on how to increase the glutathione levels. Now, this is just, this is just a few, all right, that I want to share with you, all right? They con consume sulfur-rich foods. The main ones, of course, are garlic and onions. They have a lot of sulfur in them. But look at the next thing on that sentence. It says what? Cruciferous vegetables. How many of you have heard me talk about microgreen cruciferous vegetables? And I'll let you know right now that the microgreens that we talk about is more valuable than I had even thought about in the fact that the particular phytochemicals that we find in a small amount of microgreens, like a two and a half ounce, is worth the same as eating a bushel, a bushel and a half of, a, of mature broccoli, for instance. These are very powerful, and I am going to offer again to anybody that wants to know how to grow these things, how easy it is to grow them in your own home. If, you're, if you are concerned about building your glutathione levels, this is one of the things that you can do. Very simple, all right? The next thing, other foods, are asparagus, avocado, spinach, okra, uh, cantaloupe, vitamins like B6, 12, folic acid, and biotin. Exercise boosts your glutathione levels. They say that a minimum of 30 minutes a day, five days a week on this. And the type of exercise they're talking about is not something like you're walking or running so hard that you get out of breath. Just enough to work up a sweat for 30 minutes is what you need to do to help build this. Herbs that we know about, well, supplements, first of all, like the alpha lipoic acid, selenium, and N-acetylcysteine. Now, there are others. And what I want you to do, if any of you are interested in following up and keeping up with this, as science develops these concepts, and I have to share this with you, it's been very rewarding to me to see that some of the major teaching institutions involved in these studies, like John Hopkins, University of Colorado, Duke University, are all now saying it's the natural products that work. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We've been preaching this and we should have been preaching it for 150 years, you know? We know that these things, it's important that we get them in our diet. But now, you know, Chester and I have had some conversations about this and I'll share this with you real quick. A lot of times, you know, supplements, we throw them out there like a pharmaceutical or whatever. But in this particular instance, I want you to think of these supplements as food. These things like milk thistle. For years now, scientists have used milk thistle. Silymarin is a, an active chemical in milk thistle to take care of liver dysfunction. We studied glutathione way back when, and we were always trying to develop ways to increase it in the liver itself for the, bop, for the passes to get rid of pharmaceuticals, because that's what we were studying how to break these pharmaceuticals down into the metabolites the body would use. So we had to use these particular enzymes, you know, and again, a, in a pharmaceutical manner. But not knowing all along that what we were trying to do is really reverse the aging process. So bacopa, ashwagandha, and turmeric. Now again, I'm going to have a pad up here in the front. If any of you want me to email you some of these things, I will be more than happy to do this. Okay, if you want me, and I will keep you up to date on the stuff that's happening in this arena. 
You notice that I've got the last one up there in black, highlighted. How many have ever heard of NRF2 activation or NRF2? No one, right? Okay. I'm going to share this with you. You guys are going to hear a lot about this. A lot. It's already in the news. It's already been studied both in the pharmaceutical arena and in the natural arena. NRF2 is a particular pathway in the body that is one of the pathways that after age 20 pretty much disappears as you get older. All right. <clears throat> At the center of our cellular protective pathway is a protein called NRF2 that serves as a master regulator of the body's anti... By the way, I could tell you the name of it, but it's about this long. All right? So just remember the NRF2. It's at the master regulator of the body's antioxidant response. You might think of NRF2 then as a thermostat within our cells that senses the level of oxidative stress and other sensors that and turns on the internal protective mechanism. The problem is that as we age, this protective pathway decreases. So is there anything that we can do? Well, again, yes, there is. And that's what we're going to look at now. I'm going to show you a brief video on this that was done by a company, but this will give you some real insight into this particular genetic pathway. Now. As you look at this, at first when they started working with this at the University of Colorado, uh, there was three other teaching institutions that were, were working on this particular activation. They estimated that it would be about 300 different gene expressions that it would have in our system. What they've found now is over 3,000 that it affects positively. So that if it's something that is sluggish in our system, something that's not working, by turning this particular switch on, you start a process that's very favorable for the gene, for the cell, and for many different things. Now, I'm going to share some of this with you in three areas. One is cancer, one is cardiovascular, and one is the cerebrovascular, the brain. All right? That's going to be the end of this thing. But I want you to watch now very carefully and how they describe what this stuff does. Now, again, this is a, from a teaching institution, and they're going to talk about how good their scientists are, but you know what? God designed us this way. Just want you to know that, all right? occurring molecules that can cause serious damage in your body. If free radicals are allowed to overwhelm your body's ability to fight them, they can adversely alter lipids, proteins, and DNA, triggering a number of health concerns. Fortunately, scientists have made a remarkable breakthrough that promises to give your body a natural aid in the fight against free radicals. It's called NRF2 activation. And according to researchers, it's a powerful process that stimulates antioxidant production and can wake up your body's ability to stay healthy. Understanding NRF2 activation begins with understanding how oxidative stress caused by free radicals affects your body. Free radicals are a natural result of your body's metabolic processes. Under normal circumstances, your body also produces antioxidants, which neutralize free radicals and limit the damage they can do to your cells. It's a bit like having a factory in your cells that produces enough antioxidants to keep the free radicals under control. But exposure to x-rays, ozone, cigarette smoke, inflammation, air pollution, industrial chemicals, and even exercise can overwhelm the body's natural responses to free radicals, allowing them to wreak havoc on your cells and your health. Over time, the damage to your cells and DNA turns off the power in the cell's factory. 
reducing our ability to create antioxidants and leaving us vulnerable to premature aging and health concerns. Fortunately, science has given us the ability to turn the power back on. NRF2 activation. NRF2 is a protein messenger that binds itself to DNA and is a master regulator of the body's aging process. Through the study of nutrigenomics, scientists have discovered that certain phytochemicals found naturally in foods turn on our ability to create antioxidants to combat aging and preserve health. You hear what they, they they're talking about phytonutrients, folks. And that's what we want to look at now, is specifically those phytonutrients that have been shown to turn on the NRF2 pathway. Now, there's a couple of companies that have taken this to a product. They actually have discovered it. But what we did is we, we took another approach. We went to uh, PubMed, which is kind of a holding house for a lot of scientists that put their peer review studies. And I have found over 6,000 of these studies. Now, I'm not going to tell you I've read all of them, but I read the, uh, the, the primary summary of a lot of them. And what we have discovered, okay, is that these particular phytochemicals that scientists now have identified as stimulating the NRF2 pathway. The first one up there is called terastilbene. Now this particular one is very similar to resveratrol, but you find it in blueberries. And you know we talked about eating blueberries in the beginning, but I'm not saying that you need to eat the 17 pounds of blueberries. If you eat these blueberries every day, or if you're taking a supplement. Now, I have to, I want to kind of qualify this, all right? If you are eating a diet rich in these particular phytochemicals, most likely you're going to get enough of them. But if you're in a situation where chronic conditions are affecting your body, I want to tell you the studies that are going on right now that I've read on Alzheimer's will blow you away. I will share those with you. And I will share you actually people's testimony that have had Alzheimer's. Did you hear what I said? As far as I know, there's nothing in science that really validates what I'm just saying as far as pharmaceuticals go. This is all natural products. Now, we were talking about slowing the aging process with these, but actually what they're saying now in some cases, they've actually reversed the aging process in some cells in the body. The resveratrol you find in grapes. You get cur the curcumin or curcuminoids you find in turmeric. The sulfurifin and the, 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 the diendolamine, methane, I mean, is directly, D-I-M is from the cruciferous vegetables. Those being kale broccoli, and that same thing that we were talking about earlier as far as the antioxidants and how important they were. And of course then we talk about milk thistle. Now there are about 10 more of these, but these are important because they're easy to get in your daily diet. Now what happens with this is that if you eat a quantity of your foods that have these high levels of these particular phytonutrients, then it in turn triggers in the body cell, this NRF2 pathway. In the study that used most of these particular phytochemicals, and they, used, they, they told the people to eat the diet, but they also gave them the supplement, they actually found that they reduced the oxidative stress. Now, I want you to listen to this. They reduced oxidative stress by 40%. And in essence, let me put that in terminology you can understand. That means that a person that is 80 years of age could have a cell functioning as if they were 20 years of age. Now, I didn't say that they're going to be that youthful. I'm just saying the cell's function is of a 20-year-old. Is that important? Now, what dosage or what level that you need to be on with this depends on the individual. 
But I will share with you that there are a number of studies that indicate the amounts that you need if you have certain conditions now. They're getting that fine-tuned with it. If you've got a cardiovascular issue, if you've got a cancer issue or whatever, the things that you need to do is turn this pathway back on. Now, you know, folks, we've been talking about diet and exercise for a long time. But now this is validation of what we've been saying. This is actually what the body is doing to fight these particular diseases. So you see that when you're taking high levels of these, then the benefits of the NRF2 activations is anti-inflammatory. Now, in the study, I mean, in the slide uh, presentation, they talked about how inflammation is so related to cancer and so many other chronic conditions. If you turn this pathway on, <clears throat> the gene expression, now over 3,000 of the 23,000 gene expressions that they've studied, 3,000 of these are affected by the turning on this NRF2 pathway. And guess what? I don't know of any pharmaceutical that does this yet. They are studying it right now. They are doing this. But I want to share this with you. You don't have the side effects that you would with a pharmaceutical by taking these natural supplements or at least eating these foods that are rich in these phytochemicals that your body needs. All right? Uh, DNA repair. Do you hear what I said? DNA that's been damaged by oxidative stress can be repaired. This is studies. I'm not, this is not something that just came out. There are over 120,000 studies showing some of these things that I'm telling you. Cardiovascular disease prevention and reversing some of the conditions. Diabetes, Alzheimer's prevention, cancer prevention, reverse aging of the skin and reversing the aging process. Now, the reason why that I wanted to bring this to you in kind of a thumbnail sketch is because that I want to share more with you as we go on. But I want you, if you're interested in this, other foods that may come out, other studies that may come, like I said, put your email down and I'll send it to you. All right? Well, I, I want it specifically for this, so, Chet. Okay. All right. Uh, NR, NRF2 activation can even reverse cell damage and can slow down, as I said, the aging process. Now, here it is on cancer. Now, again, this is from studies, peer review studies. These, the accumulation of the information that I'm giving you is not something that just came off the cuff. This is actually studies that they've shown. Protects the cell against cellular stress and free radical damage. Well, we would expect that. Safeguards cells from effects of inf inflammatory stresses. Enhanced production and activity of the body's potent antioxidant enzymes of glutathione and SOD and the catalase. Restrict, modulate underlying mechanisms involved in carcinogenesis, the formation of cancer cells. Now, if I didn't tell you anything else today, I think you should be interested in that. Positive influences genes involved in formation of cancer cells. Shows ability to slow progression and of and kill cancer cells, the skin cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, ovarian, myeloma, and others. This has actually been published. All of these things I'm telling you is in publish. If you, you can go on PubMed and look it up yourself. It's free to the public. That's just on cancer prevention alone with, its, with activating your NRF2 pathway with the foods and the supplements that I've been telling you about. The activation of, uh, of the NRF for protection of the cardiovascular system maintains function of the endothelial tissue, a key tissue in blood vessels, protects blood vessels from cellular stress. It enhances production of nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator increases production of specific anti-atherogenic heart protecting enzymes such as the SOD and the, the glutathione peroxidase. Protects blood vessels from inflammation. Reduces high blood pressure and improves heart muscle efficiency. Now let me ask you a question. And if you have a chronic condition or you know of anybody with a chronic condition, would it be easy just for you to tell them about these foods and the exercise that they may be involved in? 
I want you to share this with your people, folks. We don't need to just learn this ourselves and keep it to uh, hold it close to your vest. You need to let people know these things. That's the reason why we want to do these, these talks, so that we can share them with other individuals. So when your mom said, eat your greens, she must have known what she was talking about, right? I don't think she knew about, mom knew about the NRF2 pathway, but all right. And then the NRF2 activation can protect your brain and nervous system. Now, this is important because I've been asked this question by the church members and people around us here about Alzheimer's and dementia. So I want you to pay, again, close attention to this, okay? Reduces amyloid plaque accumulation. How many of you know what that is? Doc, tell me what beta amyloid does for, for the brain. It, you know, we used to think that that was a major cause of Alzheimer's. I think it plays a, a part in this. But this NRF2, there are, there's probably over 150 different studies on this particular issue with activation of the, of the NRF2 pathway with this. With natural products, folks, okay? In that it reduces the amyloid placking. That's a big ticket item, folks. It really is. Increases regeneration of dopamine fibers. It protects lipids in the brain and nerve cells, inhibits free radical damage and cellular stress, slows inflammatory stress in the brain and nerve cells, enhances the integrity of blood vessels in the brain, and this is a big one, increases activity of protective proteins such as brain-derived neurotropic factor. Now, I'm not going to ask you who knows this one. This particular BDNF primarily is a formation of protein in the brain that reverses neuron damage. All with a simple changing of your diet, adding on more of these particular phytochemicals in your regimen, and it can protect yourself from Alzheimer's. I didn't say that. That actually came from the doctors at the University of Colorado in a last seminar that I heard them talk about. Actually can protect you from getting Alzheimer's. I don't care about hereditary propensities or anything like that, because you know my old saying, heredity may load the gun, but we pull the trigger. So these are, this is a very simple seminar for an introduction to what you can do to reduce your oxidative stress so that you can start living a more healthful life. Again, a lot of you want to live a long time without diseases, and this is the way to do it. Science is just now blazing this trail. Folks, I'm telling you, this is since, since 2007, most of the information I just gave you, all right? There are a lot of things that's gonna transpire in the very near future with this from a lot of teaching institution. And like I said, if you wanted to go on PubMed and just look at the articles, just type in NRF2, and you're going to get over 6,000 different studies on this right now. All right? So remember, phytochemicals found in the common foods that we should be eating a lot more of. And you can ask my wife. I've been buying a lot more cabbage, turnip greens, <laughs> kale and things like this and preparing it. By the way, these phytochemicals that you have are not cooked out of the food. So cooking these will not destroy this, these particular phytochemicals. The sulfurifin, the indol 3 carbonyl, the DIM, all of these are very, very vital for your health. Now we know why they're even more necessary. Now I'm going to stop now and ask if there are any questions. Yes, sir. According to what I've been reading is the fact that they in turn set up a, you know, they play a part in the overall production of the chemicals that stimulate this, this NRF2 pathway. It's a very complex thing, Doc, that we've looked at, and they did say C, uh, vitamin uh, A, the B, B6, B12, folic acid, and biotin in particular have a, a real key role to play in this NRF2 
uh, activation. There are minerals as well that are involved in this. And I think though that we get enough, if you're eating your vegetables, like we were talking about, the cruciferous, you're getting the minerals necessary to activate these. T just to kind of share with you the, the, the greens that we were talking about, like the, the maca greens, um, they have a, an, a pretty good amount of these vitamins as well, okay? But God placed them there for a reason. And we found that there's, there's a natural enzyme within these, these vegetables that trigger the effects of developing these phytochemicals that are protective, that do stimulate this particular the pathway. But if I ask most of you, how many of you eat free, uh, you know, cruciferous vegetables every day, how many of you are going to raise your hand? One, two, three, four. Question is, you have 300 sextillion free radicals formed each day, right? So if you're not eating that every day, are you, is your body fighting enough of these? Now, I just said that activating the glutathione lasts for about two weeks, all right? So you need to have your schedule out and eat these foods every day of your life. Some part of these are a supplement there, thereabouts. Now, Doc, what I'm going to do is I've got a study showing where some of these vitamins work, and I'll be glad to send that to you, you know, in, in the uh, biochemical pathway there of the NRF2 activation. Any other question? I'd like to do it on a Sunday. How many of you have been... Wayne, you're growing microgreens, yes. right? How many, anybody else here growing microgreens? Okay. I, I would like to do it on a Sunday, if that's okay with you. All right? And um, I'll bring the, the uh, little kits that you can, you can buy them. Uh, on the internet or whatever, they're, you can go to uh, one of these hydroponic stores and get them even. But uh, they're very easy to grow. They, they grow uh, mature in a, from 10 to 14 days. You harvest them and eat them. And um, like I said, about two, two and a half ounces of these a day will give you an abundance of these particular, uh, these three particular phytochemicals we talk about, sulfurifin, indole 3 carbonyl to DIM, okay? All right. So why don't we do this? Um, I'll schedule it out. We'll see what Sunday would might be good for everybody, and then we'll just announce it. And uh, if you want to me to send you an email, if you're not here every Sabbath, I'll send you an email when we're going to do it. Is that all right? Okay. Any other questions? Well, that's all I've got. I'm on time today. <laughs>